If this is the first one of my videos you've ever seen, I'm Dan from Cafe Racer Garage, giving you the skills and inspiration that you need to build a motorcycle that you can be proud of. And today is the third and final part of putting the CB750 engine back together. Let's get into it. So the crankshaft bearings are a little bit worn. The two end ones and the center one are the worst. So I'll get some new ones of those as well. So removing the OEM gasket is by far the slowest part of the process so far, or the most tedious. I'm using this little scraper that I got. It's a proper gasket scraper from an automotive place, as well as a knife. And just going through and just taking it off bit by bit, trying not to scratch it at all. And this is just what you've got to do. It's just one of the parts of rebuilding an engine. Just take your time. And it's nice probably to crack a beer and just do this sort of stuff because it's easy to do. It's just time consuming and it's part of the process. It's a journey. Enjoy it. So as you can see on this side cover, there's a pretty decent gouge. So what I'm gonna to do to get rid of it is I'm gonna use the little die grinder with a sanding disc and just uh, take a little bit off bit by bit till I get down to its flush and then just tidy it up and probably use a less aggressive disc each time. So it sort of smooths it out. I'm actually extremely impressed how that cleaned up. That is spot on. Once this gets vapor blasted again, you'll never even see that. So there's another couple of small ones uh, just here. I might do the same thing and see if I can clean those up to get them looking a bit more presentable. This is it straight out of the vapor blasting cabinet and I can't even remember where that spot was. I think it was either down here or here. It's completely gone. You won't see it now and you definitely won't see it when it's painted. That's amazing. So I'm just using the ultrasonic cleaner with a little bit of degreaser just to get rid of any of the residue of oil that might be still left anywhere. Uh, this is not really a major step to do. It's just something that I thought I might add on top of everything else just to make sure that everything is clean and perfect before I paint it. When you get to the process of bagging and tagging everything, try and come up with a better way than what I did of tagging everything like with this permanent marker because the permanent marker that I used wasn't actually that permanent at all. It actually started to come off on a lot of the bags uh, due to the oil and everything that was in with all the other bags, it just sort of scrubbed off and then I was scratching my head to try and work out what bolts were what. Uh, it wasn't that bad, but it could have been that bad had I left it any longer than what I did. Masking up everything for paint is quite a time consuming job so I came up with this idea of just getting some sticky dots from the local stationery supplier and putting them over everywhere where there's a bolt hole that way when I go to tighten them up with the torque wrench I don't have to worry about the paint flaking or cracking in all of those spots. I'm actually using three coats of primer as well as three coats of flat black just as the can recommends. I am trying to get this done as quick as I can because I'm losing light, it is late afternoon and I want to get this done, bring it all inside, let it get touch dry and then once it's all touch dry I'll pretty much put everything in the oven, anything that will fit in there I'll put in there and bake it on to make that paint as hard as possible before we reassemble it. So I'm really happy with how everything turned out and once again preparation is everything when you're doing paint. <laughs> Hey Siri, set a timer for 25 minutes. Okay, your timer is set for 25 minutes. So through the process of putting this engine back together, there is one part which is causing me a little bit of a headache. So this guy here is the original countershaft bearing cover. And as you can see, it's been broken in three places. Uh, and I don't want to try and fix this. I don't want to try and use it. I want to try and find one in a better condition and paint it up and put it on the bike. But I can't for the life of me find one locally. I can't find one online anywhere. It just seems like people want a ridiculous amount of money for this, which I'm not going to spend or they want you to buy the entire engine and take this part off it, which I'm also not going to do. So right now, I don't know what I'm going to do. So 
somewhere along the lines, one of the little dowels had actually fallen out and I didn't notice and uh, it's quite crucial to have it in there. So luckily I have a lathe and I'm going to turn myself a new one out of this little piece of uh, just a bit of round stock, stainless. And it just needs to be a dowel with a hole through the center so the oil can pass through. So thanks to Ben from Precise Engine Rebuilders here on the Gold Coast. He has given this a freshen up for me, which I'm really happy about. He's checked everything over to make sure that it's all perfect. So all I've got to do now is mask it up, paint it, and then peel that masking tape off, and then pretty much put it back on the bike and we are good to go. So what I'm doing here is just giving the side cooling fins a bit of a sand. Just get them nice and smooth before the paint goes on so that it looks nice and clean. I may end up grinding them down so you have that polished edge, but I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to do that. I probably won't do it, but just in case I do, it's all prepped, ready to go, and it will look awesome if I don't decide to do it. At this point, I want to give a huge thank you to my good friend Willis for coming and spending a couple of days in the garage and really helping me put this engine back together. If it wasn't for him, this engine would probably still be in a thousand pieces. So thanks brother, I really appreciate the help. Somewhere in the process of painting this entire engine, this uh, part of the alternator cover, the back part, I had forgotten to paint and I've left it till now to take apart because I just wanted to make sure it's fully secure in there and I can just take this off. Apparently all you have to do is put a bolt through here. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm about to try it now. You put a bolt through here, the right size, so I had to go and get a special bolt just for this and push that in and apparently it'll push it and bring this part here off the taper which will allow me to take that off. So let's give it a go and see what happens. So anybody that knows what these are, please leave me a comment. I've had these things for so long and they're super handy. I believe they're for tire leaving, like to take a tire off a rim, but I'm not entirely sure because I did get them from a garage sale many, many years ago and they've been super handy for so many small things, just like trying to get this off here without doing any damage. These things are just super handy for that sort of stuff. I want to give a huge thank you to Chris Biker Customs because as you can see here, I have a nice painted up perfect piece. I got so excited about this, I didn't actually film it. Um, but I did do an Instagram story of me vapor blasting this part and it came up amazing. So I put a bit of paint on it. So thank you so much, Chris Biker Customs. He actually builds bikes very similar to uh, this, what I've got here, the CB750, and he's in Poland. So if you're looking for one of these bikes and fully built for you, uh, go and check him out. I'll leave his information in the description below for you. If you've enjoyed this video, go and check out where rubber meets the road where I actually took this thing on its first shakedown ride before the engine was rebuilt. And if you haven't seen the first two videos on this engine rebuild, I'll leave them right here.